Dr. Minsheng Wang from University of Science and Technology of China, and we'll hear more things about modular things and collaborations. Um, good afternoon. Uh, so first, let me thank the organizer for inviting me to give a talk here. Um, so today, uh, I will discuss the del derivation of modular anomaly equations in compact elliptic uh, Calabial spaces. Uh, this is uh, uh, based on work with uh, Sheldon Katz and Albert Klem. Um, so this is the outline. So first, I give some introductions, and then I focus on the main example of uh, the uh, elliptic uh, vibration over P2 that uh, Sheldon uh, just introduced in his talk. Um, um, so uh, first, I give some uh, general introductions. Uh, so as many of you know, the uh, topological string is, in physics, we defined it as a supersymmetric nonlinear sigma model from worksheet to uh, target space. Uh, X. Um, we are mostly interested in the case where the target space is a uh, Calabria threefold. <laughs> um, and then, according to uh, Witham, you can do uh, some topological twisting to the theory. There are two types of uh, topological twist called A twist and uh, B twist. Um, and this uh, topological twist uh, uh, couple the dynamical uh, degree of freedom in string theory, so you are only left with a topological uh, degree of freedom. <laughs> and the uh, models, the theories are called A model and B model. Um, so we are interested in computing this so-called topological string partition function. <laughs> um, so here, the um, FG you can uh, think of as a path integral from this. Uh, here, I don't write the action, but you uh, can compute the path integral from the worksheet to a target space, uh, summing over all maths, and also the summing over the metric of the worksheet. <coughs> and then you um, um, sum it into a, a partition function. So um, it's well known that the A model depends on only on Kähler moduli, and the B model depends on uh, complex structure moduli. <laughs> and uh, this are the generating function for so-called counting holomorphic curve, and also have a mathematical definition as a gromorphism invariant. Um, so the main idea is, is so-called uh, mirror symmetry that uh, relate <laughs> a model on a, so, well, it's a conjecture that every Calabria uh, manifold has a mirror that with exchanged uh, Hodge number. Um, so we call M and W. <laughs> um, uh, so after the mirror reflection, then you uh, can see see that like A model on M is equivalent to a B model on W. <laughs> um, so some very uh, difficult question on, uh, of counting holomorphic curve can be solved by the, the B model method. Um, so a long-standing problem is how to uh, uh, solve a <laughs> topological string on compact Calabria FIFO. Um, basically, this is uh, much more difficult than uh, the non-compact uh, Calabria trivial because the non-compact case usually are uh, described by uh, Riemann surface. It's uh, lower dimension than the compact uh, case, and in many cases you can take a limit that uh, go from compact to a non-compact case. There are many other met many methods that works on the non-compact case, like uh, topological vertex and localization. Uh, it's difficult to work for the uh, compact Calabria <laughs> Um 
Um, so as you heard in the last talk, did, uh, the recent work with uh, uh, Sheldon uh, and Albrecht proposed that topological string uh, can be written in terms of a weak Jacobi form. <laughs> Um, this provides very powerful constraint for fixing the topological string amplitude. Um, so uh, then combined with uh, the uh, B model method of holomorphic anomaly equation and boundary condition, we can solve a topological string to a very high base degree uh, or very high uh, genus for all based on fiber degree. <laughs> um, so this is discussed in uh, Sheldon's talk. Uh, so this is also coded uh, by uh, Professor Yao in his uh, recent paper with collaborator as a combination of uh, some recent work in this uh, direction. Um, so Professor Yao is also here. Um, so. But in this work, I will focus just on some particular aspect of this uh, work, namely the derivation of a holomorphic anomaly equation. Um, well, this, uh, some ingredient already appeared in this uh, paper last year, uh, but the remaining part will appear in uh, our work in progress. Uh, so first, let me remind you uh, some, give some introduction of modular form uh, so this is uh, uh, holomorphic functions uh, defined on the up complex plane transform in a particular uh, way under SL2Z uh, action. <laughs> uh, so the most canonical examples are this so-called Eisenstein uh, series can be uh, written as this uh, sum. Um, it's uh, one can show that it the uh, modular form when k is uh, even integer bigger than two. Uh, so the main theorem is uh, that uh, uh, modular forms are uh, can always written as a homogeneous polynomial of e four and e six. <laughs> Um, so this, uh, for example, gave some nice identity, well-known identity. <laughs> um, so this, uh, well, I uh, omit the case of uh, the second Eisenstein series. But it's very interesting. It's uh, not exactly uh, modular under the S uh, duality transformation, but transform with uh, kind of shift, but you can make it uh, modular by adding an uh, anti-holomorphic piece. So this uh, usually called uh, E2 hat um, is uh, modular under the S transformation. <laughs> um, so, um, so this, uh, well, then we can enlarge the space of modular form to this so-called quasi-modular uh, form is here, this theory de developed by uh, Sakia. Um, so the modular anomaly equation I discussed will uh, refer to the, some puzzle derivative with respect to the uh, E2. <laughs> um, so well, the advantage to enlarge the modular form to quasi-modular form is that they are uh, close under the derivative with respect to tau due to this uh, well-known uh, Ramanujan identities. <laughs> so if you just look at the modular form and it's not close under this derivative, but you have to include this. Um, quasi-modular form. <laughs> uh, so uh, equivalently, there's a isomorphism. Uh, we can define this so-called uh, mass uh, derivative or covariant derivative. Uh, 
uh, with an extra piece uh, proportional to the modular weight. Um, and then you can f uh, track that this identity are invariant when you replace the ordinary derivative with this uh, covariant derivative and E2 with uh, this uh, E2 hat that I defined uh, previously uh, by adding an anti-holomorphic piece. <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, isomorphism between the formula of uh, this uh, ordinary derivative and uh, mass derivative, basically any uh, formula you can replace this, uh, uh, for example, this identity, you can replace the derivative with covariant derivative and E2 with E2 hat, and it is still uh, correct. Uh, formula. <laughs> um, uh, so then, using this uh, isomorphism, we can uh, derive some useful uh, formula. For example, one of this is uh, suppose this uh, PK is a rational function of uh, quasi modular forms of uh, weight K. Um, uh, then the derivative of uh, with respect to tau and e2 are not do not commute with each other, but uh, it has this extra term. <laughs> um, this uh, can be derived using this uh, covariant derivative. Um, uh, so basically, the, you first write the anti-holomorphic derivative uh, uh, related to the derivative of E2, <laughs> and then you can um, do the uh, computation. Of course, the uh, ordinary uh, anti-derivative uh, commute with uh, derivative, but when you pass uh, the anti-derivative to the right side, you uh, have an extra piece. This uh, gives you the extra turn in the uh, commutation relation. <laughs> uh, um, so now let me uh, describe the uh, modular anomaly equation. So uh, first, before go to the more complicated uh, compact case, let me discuss uh, uh, simpler non-compact case is the so-called half K3 model. <laughs> um, uh, geometrically, it's understand as uh, by blowing up nine cones on uh, P2. <laughs> and uh, by st string duality, this is uh, related to uh, E string uh, compactify on a circle. <laughs> Um, so basically, there are two, uh, two, so we can take this so-called massless limit, and so there are two uh, uh, moduli. One is the base, and one is the fiber. Um, it, so in this case, this uh, modular anomaly equation was f uh, first discovered by Minham et al. in uh, <laughs> Um so here that uh, this genus zero amplitude can be compute, uh, it's well known in mirror symmetry that you can compute it by uh, Pika Foot's differential equations. So here are the uh, two equations. <laughs> um, so now you can solve this uh, equation around the so-called large volume point uh, can respond to zero and you've find some uh, power series solution and single uh, logarithmic solution. Um, so we then define this uh, modular parameter uh, by t the relation that its J function is equal to the <laughs> this uh, function of complex structure modular uh, ZE. Uh, well, the reason we define this uh, is that 
then you can show that uh, this two function uh, of uh, Eisenstein series uh, and tau times e4 to the one force <coughs> uh, solution to this uh, differential equation, you can uh, just plug in this uh, uh, solution and use the Ramanujan identity to check they are indeed the solution. So the mirror map is exactly the this uh, tau parameter defined by this equation. <laughs> um, so the, um, well here I give the uh, single logarithmic solution, but you can also have double logarithmic solution, then you can, uh, can com then compute the pre-potential uh, according to uh, mirror symmetry. Um, so, uh, after some analysis that I don't give the details here, that it can be shown that this uh, instant tone power can be written as the, some uh, uh, quasi modular form, uh, expansion where the coefficients are quasi modular form and satisfy this uh, modular anomaly equation. Uh, so here are the some uh, reference and generalizations of this equation to a higher genus. So this is uh, actually a motivation, as uh, Sheldon explained in his talk, to propose that the um, uh, topological string partition function can be written as weak Jacobi form because uh, weak Jacobi form uh, naturally satisfy this uh, equation. Um, and this uh, another constraint come from the vanishing of Kupa Kuma Wafa invariant. So if you expand it uh, in this way, um, then from geometric argument, it can be shows that actually uh, some of this uh, um, Kupa Kuma Wafa invariant uh, vanish. Um, so this uh, redundant, uh, this over uh, strain, the this uh, um, quasi modular form. If you uh, solve this anomaly equation and impose this constraint, this uh, uh, over constraint. So it's an interesting. Uh, mathematical problem that you can formulate as uh, uh, completely in terms of uh, a theory of quasi-modular form, why uh, such uh, quasi-modular form that, that uh, satisfy this redundancy of constraint exist. Um, so this is a, a problem that Wafa asked uh, Zagia and um, Sagia said he has he can now prove this uh, uh, why this uh, such modular quasi modular form exists. Um, but this another story. So, but here today we will uh, not uh, consider uh, just consider this uh, a modular anomaly cons uh, equation, but we will not uh, uh, study this uh, constraint from uh, vanishing condition. So let's uh, let me go to the then go to the compact case. Uh, so the main difference with this uh, previous uh, non-compact case is that there's uh, no solution that depends only on the uh, fiber parameter. Uh, so in the previous equation, you can see that uh, this first uh, the solution are only function of the fiber parameter. But they um, here this um, because this um, uh, differential equation is more complicated. This is no longer the uh, case. <laughs> but to proceed, we still define the, an auxiliary parameter um, here, similar to the non-compact case. Um, so uh, then. While well, this become very technical, I don't expect you to follow all the details here. So I 
show some formula, but it's, uh, if you want to see more detail, you can look at the paper. <laughs> so now we can write the uh, ansatz for the uh, solution of differential equation. Then you uh, derive some uh, uh, recursion relation here. <laughs> and um, so you can then actually solve this uh, coefficient by uh, using the recursion uh, relation. Um, <laughs> so then uh, one can show that the uh, mirror map uh, satisfies certain uh, modular anomaly equations, and you can also relate it the a modular anomaly with different uh, argument. Um, so here, an important notation is that we uh, define the new notation called the L2 that um, it's also the uh, derivative of E2, but uh, when you keep the complex structure modular fixed instead of the mirror map uh, fixed. Um, so after some analysis, we derive some uh, useful formula that I will not uh, give the details here. Um, so <coughs> uh, at the end, after also analyze the uh, double logarithmic so solutions, this is uh, similar to the non-compact case, but uh, it's uh, much more complicated than we derive also the uh, uh, modular anomaly equation for the compact. Uh, case. <coughs> so th um, so that's uh, the genus zero case. Let me g then go to the higher okay higher genus case. Um, so for the higher genus, I also we also consider the uh, refined so-called refined topological string. But uh, basically, the derivation is uh, similar for uh, conventional and refined uh, topological string. So I. Um, just convenient to also include generalized to this case. Um, so here, this uh, uh, refinement topological string is proposed in some earlier papers here. Um, so first, let me discuss the uh, genus one case. It's uh, rather special. <coughs> um, so here, the modular anomaly come from the determinant. So Basically, this F10 has no anomaly, but F01, you can uh, compute it to, uh, using some uh, formula. So um, then we can uh, convert to the usual convention that uh, we uh, derive this equation. So this uh, undefined case agree with previous literature, but, and uh, 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 new result is this uh, refined uh, case. Uh, now for the higher genus case, uh, we used uh, this uh, refi uh, refinement of uh, BCOV holomorphic anomaly equation he here. Um, so basically, the uh, anomaly come from this so-called BCOV propagators. So to understand the uh, modular anomaly of this higher genus amplitude, we uh, need to compute the modular anomaly of uh, the BCOV propagator. <laughs> um, so uh, while well, this is the definition of uh, BCOV uh, propagator, so um, and in this uh, previous paper, they also so that you can integrate it and fix the ambiguity. And we use this uh, integrated equation. We can, uh, after some uh, analysis, then we can comp uh, find the formula for the anomaly of BCOV propagators. <laughs> uh, so after some uh, calculation, we finally derived the uh, uh, modular anomaly equation Well, for the uh, zero degree cases are somewhat special. I here for for positive degree, this uh, agree with the previous uh, literature. <laughs> uh, 
for the unrefined case of n equals uh, zero. Um, but the new uh, term is this uh, come from the refined uh, case. Um, <laughs> Uh, however, I just uh, treat it a little bit because uh, for actually for the uh, n bigger or equals to this uh, turns out that it has uh, some conflict with the geometric calculation by uh, Sheldon's. So uh, this is uh, probably uh, due to the fact that the refinement in compact case is not uh, <laughs> entirely consistent. But uh, it's uh, quite nice that we still can track this uh, n equals one case, uh, which is the f uh, first uh, case of with refined topological string. Um, so uh, let me conclude. And um, well, this can be also generalized to <laughs> uh, more uh, base manifold like the Hertzbrook uh, surface. Um, and as uh, Sheldon explained in his talk, there's also an alternative derivation from Witten's equation that treated the topological partition function as a wave function. <laughs> this is a, a more physical and much uh, simpler derivation. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, there are some conflict at uh, n bigger O equals two, two, so we should try to find some a uh, correction that uh, maybe uh, uh, make this uh, still uh, work for this case. Uh, and finally, uh, we still have Knox uh, soft uh, topological string on a compact color uh, BL completely, so it's, um, we should f uh, discover more structure and enable to a complete uh, solution. Uh, thank you. Uh, so if there are no questions, I understand that the cocktail reception starts in about a half an hour. It might start early. It, it, it will take them a little while, maybe 15 10 or 15 minutes before the, it's ready. So please don't harass the people while they're getting ready. Uh, but enjoy the evening. Let's thank the speaker one more time.